All right, kidlets, there's no avoiding it. It is time to earn your badge. Okay, earning a badge is always done in two parts. This one is the first part where you do things kind of exactly as I show you how to do them, but I'm not gonna give you all the answers. I'm just gonna show you kind of how to do it. This is just really testing your skills. Have you been paying attention? Those type of things. Now it's a little bit different because I'm using the GoPro. I don't have the nice expensive microphone and the nice expensive camera, but it's gonna work out. The reason I'm using the GoPro is that I have to kind of move the camera all around the whole room to be able to get the shots that I need. Okay, so starting off, you will, um, I guess, show me through the little uh, six photos that I need you to take that you understand how to use the camera app. So that's what we're gonna do. Now you don't need to go outside or run around, do those things. Try to do it all within your classroom or within just your house, your living room or something like that. So again, you're gonna need your subject. So I've got my angry bird. And of course you're gonna need your iPad. So let's get started. All right, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Mr. Flick, what are you doing on the ground underneath your desk? Well, for assignment number one, I want you to get a shot of your subject, whatever it is, mine's the angry bird. Here he is. And I want you to do it in an unusual angle, okay? So I really want you to kind of either from way above it or way down low, just, just not your regular hold up and take it at normal eye height. So something different. So I've decided to go underneath my desk here. I kind of nicknamed this one rat's eye view because this is what a rat would see if they were running around your house. So uh, let me just move the camera so you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna get the shot, okay? Okay, so you can see I'm down here on the ground. I've got my subject, the angry bird. I've got my camera and let me just get some shots. Now, the one thing that I want to really do is make sure that my camera for this one that I want to do, since this is how I'm going to do my, my unusual angle shot that you want to get, is that I want to put my camera as low to the ground as possible. So right now it's like maybe, I don't know, 14 centimeters off the ground. So I want to turn my iPad around to get that camera down here. Maybe it's only now one centimeter off the ground. Oh yeah, angry bird looking so angry. Let's just change the angle a little bit just so he looks really cool. Oh yeah. This is gonna be a great shot. Now I always take three or four shots to just make sure I got it. So let me just take some more here. Make sure the lighting's good. All right. I'll see you up there for the next one. Okay, for the next one is called out of focus. Now it's really hard to actually take a photo out of focus on an iPad because it's so automatic. It wants to focus on something. So to show me that you understand how it works, I want you to take a photo of something out of focus. Now for this assignment, it works best at a distance. So if I was to just shoot one in here, it wouldn't look all that great inside my studio here. But I am right next to a marina, so I actually have a really beautiful view out my windows. And so I'm going to shoot outside towards the water here in the boats, and I'm gonna make sure it's all out of focus. Now, I'm not gonna show you how I, well, you're gonna see me do it, but I'm not gonna explain what I'm doing. All right, so first, uh, let me get something close to the camera. I, don't, I feel like I'm giving you all the secrets here. All right. There we go. Hold it up like this. Oh, I don't like the light. I'm going to grab the little sun thing. Just that. All right, for the next assignment, it's called Close Up. And we used to have a fancy name for this called Macro, but yeah, Close Up is good enough. So I've got my Angry Bird, got my camera. I'm still on lock focus from the previous assignment. And I'm just going to come in here on something really interesting here. Now, it doesn't seem to be focusing. It looks like I'm almost too close. Let me do a little tap to focus to see. Oh no, it found it. And... Okay, the next assignment is called Same Shot, Two Focuses. Okay, let me explain. You're actually gonna do two shots. But in the first shot, you have whatever's closest to the camera, so you have that in focus. And then you have, in the second shot, you have whatever's farther away from the camera in focus. And this really lets me know that you understand how to use tap to focus really well. So I'm gonna set it up reverse of what you see there because you're the camera and then now I'm the camera. So I'm going to, um, and you have to have something really quite close to the lens uh, in your foreground here. Foreground is whatever's closest to the camera. 
And so my first shot, so I'm just gonna rest it down here just so I make sure my shots look pretty close to the same. And I'm going to uh, really focus on the plant for my first shot. And then my next shot, I'm gonna focus on the angry bird. So now the plant's out of focus. Okay, assignment number five is called silhouette. Now normally a silhouette's a bad thing. A silhouette is when your subject is against a bright background, like a light like I have here or my windows there. And if they're in their eyes, then it's good because I can see the face and everything else like that. But if they're behind them, then it silhouettes them. It just makes them into a dark shadow or really darkens their, the, the subject's face or something. And so normally that's a bad thing. But for this time, you can actually do it to be artistic. So that some of the great photos that have been taken are actually silhouettes, if it's on purpose. I mean, and you can kind of always tell. It's just like, uh, dude, that was my birthday party and you can't even see my face. Well, that would be wrong. But if it's just like, ooh, this is very artistic, then people are like, you're so cool, you're such a great photographer. So I'm going to take my, my angry bird here and I'm gonna put him against my light that's just right here. And I'm gonna see what how that looks here just Okay, so it does silhouette him a bit, but then I'm gonna use the tricks that I've been learning here and tap on the light, and now it really silhouettes him. Okay, your last assignment, assignment number six, is called Action Blur. And kind of like silhouette, if it's done on accident, it looks like an accident, but if it's done on purpose, it looks really cool. Okay. And uh, normally when things are, are blurry uh, because of movement in a camera, it's uh, usually because it's, it's being shot. Something's moving and it's very dark or it's just not very bright. Uh, but if it's bright, it usually the, the aperture can open up enough and it can get a, a good enough shutter speed on it. So it'll take it and it will lock that action and you can see it clearly on your camera or on the camera app here. So. Um, if you're getting too many accidental blurs, you're probably too dark or something's moving too fast. So get out into the bright sunshine and then take it there and it'll be good. So uh, sporting events would be a kind of a good example of this. Lots of bright lights in the basketball uh, court and then you know, can take your shots. But this one, I wanna do it on purpose. And so I think I'm gonna get an action blur of my Angry Bird kind of uh, vertical one. I could do a horizontal one. Maybe I'll do both to see how this works here. So uh, let me just go ahead and do this here. I'm going to go from the bottom up, and top down, and now let's do side to side. Oh, missed it. All right, wait till you see what I just took. It's going to be cool. Okay, now that you have the photos, this is how you complete your assignment. You've got to take uh, every one of the photos, of course, will be in your photos app. And in your photos app, you need to crop it to square. And me saying this just now, I realized I never showed you how to use the presets in cropping. So let me show you that now. Okay, I'm working on one of the final projects here and you're used to, you know, like grabbing the handles and cropping and things like that, just like I demonstrated just now. But actually in the corner here are the preset crops. So if you want to go with, say, something that's uh, square, like to go on social media, it's already there and it will crop it square. So let me show you that again. So let's say something, see now it's stuck square. Anything I do now is going to be on the square mode and it will keep it square without you having to guess it. So that's in presets right down here for crops. And I could turn that on and turn it off. I could go back to original and then I can go back and uh, tell it to be square again and it crops it and then you can move it around once you have that crop to exactly how you want it. But anyhow, I thought I might tell you about presets because it's on the test. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna crop every photo to square, every one, all right? And then you're going to apply an appropriate filter to it. Okay, so some type of filter, just you know, go through them, see how you know, it looks, and just use your artistic eye and make it you know, even better with a nice uh, filter on it. And then for at least two of them, I want you to draw using markup in the Photos app somewhere on the photo. 
You can either use the text one to sign your initials in the bottom corner or use the pen tool and draw around on it. But I want you to show me that you understand how the markup tool works and don't use the default colors and fonts, okay? At least change the font, change the color from black, do those kind of things. And then once you have those six photos all edited and beautiful and you think they're just, they're ready to go, then you send those to whoever at your school is in charge of grading the badges. So you, you have their contact information, you email them a copy of it. Uh, better yet, put it on your digital portfolio, whatever service you're using, a blog or, or some type of uh, digital locker. Put it up to there and then send them a link. And if you want, uh, send me a copy of it. Here, I'll put my email address right here. It's really, it's easy. It's tech, mytechbadges at gmail.com. And anyhow, send me a copy of the photos and if I like them and if they're really good, I might use them on the channel here. So you might be, be famous for your work. So go ahead and send me a copy and uh, send whoever's doing the grading in there. And then now let's go into the next video and we're gonna talk about assignment number two. You're this close to getting your badge, this close.